Uh, my name is Zen Javid and I'm your IELTS examiner for today. And my IELTS examiner number is 1234, first of all. Can I see your picture identity, please? Yes, sir. Here it is. Thank you. What's your surname? Uh, Jalal. It's and Jalal. what's your given name? Hashim. What should I call you? Uh, Hashim would be better. Fine. Thank you, Hashim. All right, Hashim. Do you work or study? Sir, I am a part-time student and a part-time worker. Okay. So, what job do you do? Uh, uh, most of the time, I am a teacher. Mm -hmm. At my academy, I have a small scale academy. Other than that, I am a local businessman. Okay. Right. And what hours do you work? Uh, sir, there's no fixed hours. I just wake up in 3 in the morning mm -hmm. and go till 11 p.m. Fair enough. That's a long working hour. Yes. Okay. At what age would you like to stop working? 30. 30 would be enough. Okay. Fair enough. Why have you chosen 30? Uh, it'll be, I guess, uh, I've been working since uh, since 2013, so that will be a nice time span to work. After that, I'll have a retirement life and uh, work, uh, I'll hire some candidates to work for me, mm -hmm. so I'll have a retired life. In Fair enough. Right, let's talk a little bit about photog uh, photography. How often do you take photographs? Uh, I'm, I'm not very crazy about taking pictures like uh, normal people. Like, uh, I don't take a lot of photographs. Hmm. I'm not into photography. Okay, so you talked about people. Why do people like taking so many photographs? I guess the society is going uh, kind of, I don't want to use that word, but uh, they are going toward the uh, Psycho, I have learned this word somewhere where they say the people taking photos are more prone to uh, psycho, ill psychological behavior. Hmm. People think and feel better when they see themselves in the camera, in the, in the screen, which was only done by some very famous people hmm. once okay. and uh, people are uh, drawn towards that. And now, when they see themselves in the screen, they they feel sense of accomplishment. Mm, perfect. Uh, what about you? Do you like being in the photographs? I like being in the photographs. It's a good thing to be. <laughs> it's okay. a good place to be. Okay. C can you describe your favorite photograph for us, please? Of mine or somebody else? It's up to you. Uh, the favorite photograph uh, was taken by me, of me. In front of Kaaba. Okay. I was kissing the Kaaba and I just took out the phone and had a selfie and it was very good. I loved it. Okay. What did you love about that photo? Uh, the, it's, a, it's a very uh, uh, deep question, I must say. Mm. Uh, the thing that a, a low life and a bad person like me was uh, so close to the Kaaba is an idea that uh, that shook me to the core okay. that everybody can visit the Kaaba. Fair enough. Right, now we're going to talk about sleep. Sleep. So, how many hours a night do you sleep? I try to get as much as uh, five hours, mm -hmm. but uh, I wake up early, so sleep is uh, uh, kind of my weak point. I'm mm -hmm. not getting enough sleep. So, how many hours a night should normal people sleep? Seven to eight hours is best. Perfect. Okay, fair enough. Do you ever find it difficult to fall asleep? No, I'm I'm very lucky in that uh, respect. Mm -hmm. I just uh, go to bed and I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There are a lot of people who like taking naps during the day. Yes. Do you think it's a good idea? It's a very good idea. It's it increases productivity, your immune system, your Everything just, uh, you g get a boost out of it. It's in the sunnah as well to sleep after lunch, I guess. So it's a good thing and a good practice should be done. Okay, fair enough. Now, in the second part of your test, I'll give you a cue card. 
which has a question on it. You'll have a minute to prepare your answer. You can take notes if you like, but those notes will not be graded. And then you're supposed to talk about it for about one to two minutes. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Right, here is your question and you can take the notes here. Here is your pen, right? And here is your question. All right, Hashim. Could you please start speaking now? Yes, sir. Uh, the, the, the most rememberable journey for me was uh, one year ago, and it was to Saudi Arabia. I went uh, to Mecca and Medina. Um, uh, it was... Uh, November 2019 so it was the the coldest weather in Saudi mm -hmm. mostly it's very hot out okay. there mm -hmm. so we chose this month because it's a bit cool and it's easy to indulge in all the physical exercises and activities that take place over there so it took me about uh, one day uh, tw 12 hours at least to uh, pack my bags from Pakistan and open in the hotel in Mecca. Mm -hmm. It was a very memorable and spiritual journey for me. I went there to see Kaaba mostly. Uh, uh, Kaaba is such a thing and such a place where every Muslim wants to go, needs to go and have to go to, uh, to get rid of his sins. So the mostly it was for uh, uh, for my spirituality, for my thought process. I wanted to see Kaaba for myself, and um, it was phenomenal. I went there. I I get to kiss the black stone. It was a uh, mem mesmerizing experience for me uh, to be at a place where our prophet used to walk and used to pray. To uh, pray at the same place, I I happened and uh, I I'm sorry, I'm just emotional at the time. But uh, it was uh, out of this world. Uh, there is a place uh, near the uh, grave of Holy Prophet, and it is known and told that this place was brought from the Jannah. So if you pray in that place you are basically praying in Jannah. So I, <laughs> I don't know, I'm st again, I'm uh, getting emotional. So I received the honor to be there and pray there. So that was the best thing ever happened to me. And I, I was with my mother. So best God, bestest. <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right. So now let's talk a little bit about traveling. Yes. And what's the best way to travel around your own city? Uh, the best way to travel is by car. I must say it's by car. It's not the most economic or the safest way, mm -hmm. but it's the easiest way. It's best if you can afford it. Okay. Um, could you compare how people travel today to how people used to travel 50 years ago? I think there's... Uh, there's a black and white situation in that mm -hmm. 
because 50 years ago there was uh, no such thing as a proper road most mm. mostly okay uh, so the machinery the technology of, uh, uh, world is changing into seconds and 50 years ago it's it seems like a stone age to me mm. uh, 50 years ago there were bus system and cycles i guess mostly uh, uh, the tonga mm -hmm. have you heard of it ever oh, okay. you have Right, oh, fair enough. So you think that the things have changed too much. too much. What are some of the advantages of being able to travel around the world so easily now? There's a lot of advantage in that. Uh, you can learn a lot. You can experience a lot. Okay. A journey away of one hour, in my point of view, can teach you things that you would even not be able to earn in a uh, earn i said learn in a year mm. uh, basically earning is learning so uh, uh, an hour on a journey is more valuable than a year at your own house okay fair enough now let's talk a little bit about globalization um, do you think globalization is a positive phenomenon the world is changing rapidly and uh, globalization is uh, everything has its pros and cons uh, the people who are against it can give a thousand reasons that it must not happen but the people who are in favor they have their own opinion they have their own uh, right to say things so everything depends on the results we cannot always say uh, what's the perspective of the person or why is he uh, why is he voting for something we yeah. just need to know the results mm -hmm. results matter the most okay. not our perspective or uh, or the the initial thoughts okay. they are not very important fair enough now let's talk a little bit about aeroplanes because they have revolutionized yes, uh, traveling um, they produce so much of the pollution yes sir. despite that should we continue with the planes uh, i think we should continue uh, until we get a better solution mm. uh, you see flying in the air is something that our forefathers would trade their souls for hmm. it's a big thing True. and after that nothing came that could equal or equally cancel its importance and nowadays uh, airplane rides are even safer than the car rides hmm. uh, car accidents are but i was talking more about the ecological side of it you see sir i guess um, the earth has been here a long before than we mm. did okay. and uh, there's uh, i guess not before 200 years humans didn't have the technology or the heavy industry okay. and uh, earth will uh, live after billions of years after we have gone mm. so i don't think a small airplane kind of stuff bothers the planet <laughs> okay so how do you think will we replace the airplanes once we run out of fossil fuels uh, I have an idea of solarly charged drones uh, they, they will be drone bus system mm -hmm. but they'll fly obviously and uh, but it will not be equally in, uh, uh, practical like the airplane we will always have uh, the airplane in our life one way or another we can replace uh, it in uh, wars but we might not be able to replace them in the service sector no okay fair enough thank you very much Hashim. Thank that's you. the end of your test all right students i hope you really enjoyed his test he did a really good job and i really enjoyed it uh, the questions i put to him he answered them lively his answers were detailed vocabulary was excellent and at the same time he was so confident really he wanted to talk he had answer to everything I put at him or I threw at him now the thing that I loved the most was how natural he was did you notice when he was speaking his words his hands his shoulders his head 
It was all synchronized and he spoke so fluently. Although the speed was a bit slow for my liking, but it wasn't that bad. This is how he speaks probably. Then at the same time, the vocabulary that he used was really good. Um, a normal student of six band mm -mm, won't use that vocabulary. And he at no point looked as if he had crammed the vocabulary. He was so fluent, it was coming naturally, which made him a natural speaker. His pronunciation was okay, could have been better in some places, like his T could be improved, but it was all right. It was understandable. And at the same time, he explained things in a way that you wanted to listen to, which made him an interesting speaker. Now, I liked his vocabulary too much. His body language was excellent. His confidence, very good. Eye contact, very good again. Um, the vocabulary that he used, you of course liked it. Grammar was, he used a variety of sentence structures, like he used simple sentences, he used compound sentences, complex sentences, he used conditional sentences, at times he used even the passive voice. So we had an amalgam of everything which actually took him from six to seven. Um, 7.5, maybe on a very good day, but it's definitely a seven, not less than that. Now, let's have a look at some of the things that he did really well. First thing that he did really well was how he sat in his chair. He was very comfortable, and you could notice that his body language was good because he was sitting well. Some of the students, when they come in for the test, they sit right at the tip of the chair and they're squeezed like this, as if they're sad or if they're confused. And that reflects in your test when you cannot answer or understand things really well. If you do not understand questions right at the beginning, the examiner will feel that you're not a very good speaker. So he'd give you easier questions which in turn mean that you will not score really well. So your start has to be really good. So before you go in, keep yourself energized. When you go in, sit properly, have the smile on your face. You don't have to laugh, but you need to look confident as if you're ready. So first thing, be ready. Now, after that, your body language has to reflect that you can speak. It, when you and your words are in sync with each other, it looks, it looks better and it sounds more confident. At the same time, the examiner will feel like, okay, the student understands. It means your understanding of English is good. So this is the first thing the examiner will look at. Does the person actually understand? So if you do, very good. Now, when I put him a question or whenever I threw a question at him, he always answered straight away. So if you're asked a question and then you wait for some seconds, I'll say one or two, this, Pause of two seconds is too much. And then you speak about it. It means you don't understand the English naturally. You try to understand first, you translate, and then you answer. Not a very good thing. And I wouldn't recommend you do that. So as soon as the question is put at you, you know what the question is. So try to answer straight away. You can use the linkers or fillers like, mm, um, well, as you know, I think, or whatever you want to say. It's up to you, whatever is natural for you. Try to use those words to buy yourself some time and then answer. In the first part, did you notice that at one point he was a bit off? Do you work or study? Sir, I am a part-time student and a part-time worker. So his answer was actually correct. He said, I am a teacher and a businessman. But what I didn't like was that my question was, what do you do? So I was expecting like he would say, I work uh, and I run a business or I teach and I run a business. That would have been better, more accurate. But his answer wasn't wrong. He said, I am a teacher. So that's more like a state. My question was more about action. So I thought maybe the guy's a little off, but later on, he actually covered it. Okay, then uh, at one point when I asked him, at what age would you like to stop working? After that, I'll have a retirement life. And then I will have a retirement life. Retirement life isn't correct. He should have said, then I'll have a retire, or I'll enjoy retired life. But did you notice at the end of the same answer, he used these two. So I'll have a retired life. Retired life. It means he knows what the right 
uh, combination should have been, but he just didn't at the beginning. So we would forgive him for that because he knows what the right word is, but he did use this thing one more time in the test, which wasn't that good. Okay, so then um, if you look at another thing that he said, he said, and now when they see their cells in the screen, they their selves instead of themselves. So people should do it themselves. They should do it themselves, not their selves. So their selves, that was a bit off. Okay, now after that, um, he went on, he talked about things, he did pretty well. And at one point, he used a word. Okay. And uh, people are uh, drawn towards that. People are drawn towards it. Drawn towards it. Most people would say people are attracted to it. So drawn towards it sent me a message that the guy can use a variety of vocabulary, which isn't that simple, and a normal student wouldn't use that. So drawn towards that actually told me that, okay, the guy was a little better than most people. All right, then um, he used another one. He said, They feel sense of accomplishments. Again, not a very difficult thing, but most students of band six won't use that. So sense of accomplishment actually told me that the guy's vocabulary is not that bad. It's actually good. And then um, later on, he used the words like low life, uh, shook me to the core. Again, excellent phrases. And they would assert in a band seven for him. So if we go forward and have a look at some of the other things that he did, um, his answers were detailed. He explained what he meant. So there was no ambiguity in the answers, which, was, which is really good. Your answers have to be explicit. The listener should understand everything you talk about. If they don't, most people don't. So not a good thing. But in his case, he did a very good job. He proved his point whenever... He had to, which actually uh, sent a very good message to me. At the same time, I did not notice a change in his body language throughout the test. It was positive. He, he came with an intent to talk. He wanted to score well. The desire was there. So I asked him questions where I wanted to check his opinions, his views. When the examiner is asking you for your views and he's asking for details, it means you are doing well. And the examiner wants to make sure that your level is better than what you're doing at the moment, but give you more and more questions of that type so that you could actually express yourself more. Okay, now uh, in the second part, did you notice that his answer, when I gave him the cue card and he had a minute, so he took a minute and then he spoke about it really well, but he took too long. Uh, instead of finishing in two minutes, he actually took more than two minutes, which I think wasn't that good. Had he finished in two minutes, he would have scored better. Okay, now at one or two points, I noticed that uh, he used words which were probably not English. Sleep is a, a kind of... He actually covered it quite well. And those were in the middle of the sentences, so I didn't understand what those were, but he actually covered so well and he explained those things, which I think was really good. Please do not use any other language except English, okay? So if you don't, your score will be better, but if you use it too much, no, you're not even scoring a six then. So take care of this thing. No other language except English. All right, and another thing that I noticed was like, okay, the guy is a bit too religious, um, do not use anything, although he didn't, um, that would hurt somebody else's feelings. So your religious beliefs are your religious beliefs and everybody respects that. And you should respect other people's religious beliefs too. So, or their political beliefs. So no body shaming, um, no things, no racism, for example. Try to talk about things which are general and nobody would be hurt by what you are saying. So. I would uh, stay away from too religious a talk, too political a talk, too racist a talk. Not a good idea. Although uh, he did not cross the limits anywhere, which was good. Okay, at the same time, during, um, during the last part of his speech, his answers were really detailed. And uh, I really loved one phrase that he used, that is, 
learning is earning. And then he said that his uh, forefathers would trade their souls for flying. So not very simple uh, statements. A simple six-band student may not use them. So that took him to that level. Um, great, so, sorry, band seven. So you've seen the test, you've seen the questions. What you can do now is that um, whenever I ask a question to him, you can pause the video there, you can record your own answers, and you can practice this way. Once you've recorded your answers, you can listen to them so that you would understand where do you stand and then look for the vocabulary bits, look for the grammar bits in it and see if you have used a variety of vocabulary. If you think that the word I've used is really simple, like good, bad, find out what more accurate word would be more suitable here and how could you replace those words in your speech? Once you've learned a better um, word, then re-record your, an sorry, your answer and you would have a very good answer. So thank you very much for being with us. I hope you've understood how to score well and how to score at least a seven band in your speaking test. And we'll bring more tests like this. Uh, keep showing your love, subscribe to our channel and share this video with as many friends as you can. Bye-bye.